Hi everybody, Steve here at Forest Lawn Memorial Park in Glendale, California. And I'm just sitting here in my car waiting for the gates to open. They don't open till eight o'clock and I'm here a little bit early. Just drove in from Palm Springs. I'm meeting with Craig Talbot. He's the nephew of actress Gloria Talbot. He invited me to meet him here today for a tour of three grave sites belonging to members of the famous Hollywood Rat Pack. My goal today is to see if I can find all of the grave sites of the primary members, and I'm starting here. So I see they're just now opening the gates here, so let's go get started. The first grave site that we're going to visit today belongs to singer, entertainer, and Rat Pack member Sammy Davis Jr. He's laid to rest here at the top of the hill in the Court of Freedom Gardens of Honor section. Craig was just telling me that Davis's memorial service was held at Forest Lawn Memorial Park in the Hollywood Hills, and then he was brought here to Forest Lawn Memorial Park in Glendale for burial. It was a private service for the family and the friends in here. They took up pretty much all the space on the lawn. Once that was over, though, and they cleared out, the doors were opened, and any public were Oh, they here, could kind of does it? Could cut circle around and walk by oh, that's nice. where the casket was. And that's huh. like one of the very few rare instances when the, huh. the doors were actually open. That's really nice. Now, the service itself was was public, open it to the public? Mm -hmm. And you yeah, said it was yeah. over at the Hollywood Hills? Uh -huh. In the Hall of Liberty. Huh. Oh, just because it was so large? Yes. In fact, it was it came the SRO because of the people actually trying to stand outside and listening through the speakers. Hmm. Wow. Once you're inside the gates, you can see that it's a very intimate garden courtyard and directly across from Sammy Davis Jr.'s gravesite is the final resting place of another singing legend and we'll visit his gravesite next. This is the Davis family plot here where he's buried alongside other family members and friends. His father, Sammy Davis Sr., who was also a dancer and entertainer and who gave his son his start in the business, is buried just to his right. And I'll read the inscription on Sammy Davis Jr.'s headstone since it's probably a little bit too small to read on your screen. The inscription on his headstone reads, Sammy Davis Jr., the entertainer. He did it all. December 8th, 1925 to May 16th, 1990. Your loving wife, Alto Vis, and father of Tracy, Mark, Jeff, and Manny. Davis died from throat cancer in Beverly Hills, California at the age of 64. And he really did do it all. During his career, he appeared in more than 75 movies and TV shows, recorded more than 50 albums, had number one hit songs with Hey There, I've Gotta Be Me, and The Candyman. And of course, his association with fellow Rat Pack members, Peter Lawford, Joey Bishop, Dean Martin, and Frank Sinatra, is legendary. He truly was one of the very few people to ever become a legend in his own time. And I never knew until today that he came from an entertainment family. Were any of you familiar with Sammy Davis Sr.? And do you have a favorite Sammy Davis Jr. song? If I could only choose one, I guess it would have to be Once in a Lifetime. What a classic. <laughs> now let's walk over to the other side of the courtyard. And Sam Cook is right here, right across the lawn from Sammy Davis Jr. Now, obviously, Sam Cook was here first. I wonder if Sammy Davis Jr. chose his spot, you know, to be here next to Sam Cook, or if it's just coincidental. My favorite Sam Cook song is A Change Is Gonna Come, and it's been in my top 10 list of favorite songs of all time since the very first time I heard it. So it's pretty surreal and special to be here today at his gravesite. I had no idea that he was neighbors with Sammy Davis Jr. That's pretty neat too. It's kind of mind-boggling to remember that he had more than 30 top 40 hits between 1957 and 1964. Remember Chain Gang and Another Saturday Night and Twisting the Night Away? And how about the classic You Send Me? His list of hits just goes on and on. And today he's considered to be one of the most influential soul artists of all time. He really accomplished a lot in his very short life. He was tragically shot and killed on December 11th, 1964 at the young age of 33 at the Hacienda Motel in South Los Angeles, not far from the city of Inglewood. In the nearby Court of the Christus, 
within the columbarium of eternal light is the final resting place of actor and cultural icon Humphrey Bogart. And Bogart, or Bogey as he was often called, was the original founding member of the Rat Pack. It all started back in the mid-1950s when Bogey and a number of his A-list showbiz friends used to hang out at his home with wife and actress Lauren Bacall and they would stay up all night drinking and partying. Apparently after one really long night of partying, Lauren Bacall said, you guys look like a bleeping rat pack. And that's how they got their name. After Bogart died, Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, and Sammy Davis Jr. became the group's leading members. Over the years, various members of the group performed in the Vegas casinos together and even made 20 movies together. The classic 1960s movie Ocean's Eleven helped cement their relationship with the public as the Rat Pack of very cool famous friends. And right here just to the left of this statue or little figurine is the cremation niche of the legendary Humphrey Bogart. And I never noticed before now that he was born on Christmas Day. And according to her Find a Grave memorial page, Lauren Bacall's ashes are also interred here. I'm kind of surprised to see that she doesn't have a plaque though. Bacall was Bogey's fourth wife and they were married from 1945 until his death in 1957. I also hadn't realized that Bogart died at such a young age. He was only 57 years old when he succumbed to esophageal cancer at his home in Los Angeles on January 14, 1957. Lauren Bacall died from a stroke more than 50 years later on August 12, 2014 in Manhattan, New York. And of course, they, uh, we're no angels, and Gloria worked with him. Okay, so Gloria Talbot, she did, your, your aunt, she worked with him on uh, We're No Angels. Really? Oh, gosh. Another member of the Rat Pack was comedian Joey Bishop. And like Lauren Bacall, he lived to be 89 years old. He died from lung cancer on October 17, 2007 in Newport Beach, California. He was cremated and reportedly his ashes were scattered at sea. Now I'm going to head over to Westwood Village Memorial Park where two of the other Rat Pack members were laid to rest. While Humphrey Bogart was born on Christmas Day, fellow Rat Pack member Dean Martin died on Christmas Day. Martin died in nearby Beverly Hills at the age of 78. He had been diagnosed with lung cancer and died from acute respiratory failure. His signature song was Everybody Loves Somebody Sometime and it's also his epitaph, but my favorite Dean Martin song, of course, is Memories Are Made Of This. A fellow Rat Pack member, actor Peter Lawford, who was also the brother-in-law of President John F. Kennedy, died in Los Angeles from cardiac arrest on Christmas Eve, December 24, 1984. His cremated remains were initially interred here, but in 1988 they were removed and scattered in the Pacific Ocean. He's supposed to have a plaque here in the cemetery with his name on it, but I haven't been able to locate it. I remember Peter Lawford mostly because of his son, actor Christopher Lawford, who co-starred in one of my favorite movie comedies, Kiss Me Guido. The chairman of the board and the leader of the Rat Pack, singer, actor, and entertainer Frank Sinatra, is laid to rest here at Desert Memorial Park in Cathedral City, California, and I've already visited his gravesite a number of times on this channel, but in the last few months his older headstone was replaced with a new headstone, so I wanted to share that with you today in case you haven't already seen it. And even if you have, it never gets old visiting Frank Sinatra's gravesite. And as for my favorite Sinatra song, it would have to be a tie between All the Way and High Hopes. How about you? What's your favorite Sinatra song? And this week I want to thank my newest PayPal and Patreon supporters, Alan Bromberg, Dana Pretzer, Debbie Williams, and Randy LaFontaine. Thank you all so much for your extra generous donations to my channel. They're very appreciated. And thank you too to all of my new subscribers. Until next time, thanks for joining me and for sharing the memories everyone.